Hello everyone, this is Luke Osterbrook and I'm talking about how um, artificial intelligence does not vi violate copyright. So, the impact on businesses and society as a whole. The issue. Do all AI images violate copyright? And what is this? What are the rights granted by copyright? It is the ability to reproduce a work so making copies of something that you have created, um, distributing these copies of the work to the public, perform the works, the work publicly, so maybe um, just doing it in public, and displaying the work um, publicly, so like exhibiting it. So this can range from many different things, uh, like video, creating, someone creating videos, someone creating images, um, Things like that. And also, um, you cannot create adaptations of that work if you do not have the copyright. So, what this does not include is fair use. So, fair use, you can use something that's copyrighted, such as in parody, when, um, the, when you're kind of parroting the, the purpose or the meaning so like uh, just making a song that's based on another song that uses the same tune um, but you change the lyrics that's parody something that's obviously not supposed to mimic what the original um, art, um, art piece was um, so for non-commercial use education we're able to use um, videos that are copyrighted pictures for research purposes educational purposes personal use um, you can use smaller smaller portions of it, um, and that's just like uh, using like 30 seconds of a video that's copyrighted. And the, the impact on the market. So um, if it doesn't harm the market of the original one, it's more likely. So you, as you can see, I, um, I, I bolded the words more likely because these aren't like clear-cut rules and the more they're like each one of these things when you use it the less likely you will be infringing on the copyright of that thing but what we're talking about is AI creating these pro these things that people create but it's done by AI and I'm gonna focus in because it's a very broad topic there can be videos and music but to the issue is kinda of the the same so I'm gonna just focus in on the images part of that and cre uh, images created by AI. So, does AI itself have rights? That'll be an impact on businesses and society. So that's kind of the question we're asking, or one of the questions. Is all AI under public domain? So, is it all under this um, free use? You can anybody can use it. And then one of the the main impacts will be. Uh, will business be, businesses be able to use AI to advertise their business? So that's like the impact on business. And will artists and designers um, be affected by this? Like one, like human ones that are creating these creating images that may be rivaled by the use of AI. And no, I do not think AI violates copyright. And this is not based on like the like kind of like against the artist. This is not what I think, but what um but what the like the, the the courts have said the um the supreme court has said and um the copyright laws that are already in place so that's kind of what i'm talking about i'm not talking i'm tr i'm focusing more on uh like the laws and what's concrete than what i necessarily think about it cuz i'm answering does it violate copyright and um just to kind of show this i'm using uh, generating AI images throughout this. You see these two pictures right here. They were generated from a website called Deep AI where you can type in um, any word you want and it'll create an image based on that. And, I, and right here is a excerpt from the, um, the terms of use. Talks about who owns it, uh, specifically Deep AI, and they say that um, it's public domain and that so I can use it and like on anything that this was copyrighted and um, the images generated are not subject to the copyright so anybody can use it there's no owner um, 
No, the and none of these images. Yeah, nobody owns them. So that just kind of shows off what, what I'm talking about. The effects on people. So there's good. There's easy creation of images. If you're not very artistically skilled, then you can create images. And um, the impact. Many companies are turning to AI tools to create images for marketing, saving time and costs. So companies are benefiting from this. These businesses. Uh, they're able to to uh, generate many pictures, many uh, art that they want to use to help promote their business. But this can impact these artists that are kind of made obsolete due to this. It's an ethical gray area. Do you want to create use these images and um, use generated content that's not super clear about who owns it um, as a result of these... Um, people that are losing jobs and and really just losing the um, artistic kind of expressing yourself from people rather than using pictures based on algorithms. And so, yeah, this leads a lot of vagueness because there's not many laws that are in place to address this. So my first point, um, the law. So there was a, um, there was a case between um, Shira Permolder against the copyright depart department. And uh, he created his si computer system called Creativity Machine that would make uh, visual pieces of art. And he saw that that it was making the images so he um, he should be the owner of the any image that his machine creates. And the office denied the application on the grounds that he is not a human author. So my first point is that you must be a human author to create to have copyright over these images and yeah so again uh, the copyright office refused to register the work and ultimately um, the the uh, the judge did not give him those um, the rights because he lacked human authorship and then second one AI's lack of creativity so the human authorship requirement is actually in the, um, per the Library of Congress and the Copyright Office, this uh, document just talking about, they had to make a document to express um, AI and copyright because it was such a rising concern. And they talked about how already in the copyright documents, it talks about that there must be a product of human creativity. And... Um, this is not the case with AI, as AI does not come up with the material, but it uses the process of machine learning to um, to basically um, be exposed to, much, to as much as content as possible to where it can decide based on what things have already telling it. Like, if this is a cat, it'll show a cat. It might get it wrong first, but then once it gets more yes and no answers, it will start to figure out what a cat is based on this criteria. Therefore, it's more algorithm based and less, um, you know, creative creativity based, which is which is different from how our brains work. So, and the third point, um, so the black box leaves copyrighted question. So, so kind of how uh, this AI works is that um, it uses its prior knowledge from kind of like machine learning, and then the new data, and tries to kind of use these algorithms and information kind of like combines this data to try to make a prediction or make a piece of art. But this black box is, um, it's so complex. The algorithms it's using, not, um, no one can really like, can reach a, de can, a decision or conclusion on what it's used to, to get this prediction. So it's kind of a black box because you don't know what um, it's using which which data it's using to reach its decision because it's so complex, which makes it um, it, it makes it hard for people to claim that the the pictures that they made were copyrighted based on um, like this information. So it's like if you made a picture and it you think that AI is copying it, maybe there's not really you can't really look at the algorithm and see what it used and if it was really using your uh, design or just maybe getting an idea from it, so. 
And the last point, that it prevents oversaturation of copyright claims. So, so say that um, a machine or AI or a person can get copyright from them creating art. Then, then, then people can just generate as much art as they want to, as, as much art as possible to try to gain more traction on all the things that can be created. There's an infinite amount of things, but you can get um, oversaturated the market where like anything you try to make may have already been made by AI because of it's a quickness to generate these pictures and um, designs. So it can, claim, it can claim more ground and generate. And this is a global issue, so a lot of uh, countries are already given their stance on AI. You, as you can see, ChatGPT was disabled in Italy because it um, just mimicking human response and um, conversations or making art. So some people are very adverse to this, while some people would like it to de develop further. And in conclusion. Uh, it's proven that AI does not violate copyright until there is more writing that would oppose in copyright laws. So it's vague. Um, the laws right now are really vague and they don't really um, touch uh, AI because it's such a new topic and that these laws are very old. So currently in the situation that we're in, this is not copyright. And there would need to be further laws in the future to, um, to make this conclusion other otherwise are different. So a couple questions that um, I would rise to, to ask would be, would you use AI for art to promote your business? And do you think that AI, using AI to generate images is unethical? Thank you um, for listening. I hope you have learned something and have reached a decision based on this presentation. These are the sources used to uh, back um, this information. Thank you.